The Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant, we pray, who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ, may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. To my shame, I say that we are too weak. But what anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking in foolishness, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they children of Israel? so am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like an insane person. I am still more with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, far worse beatings, and numerous brushes with death. Five times at the hands of the Jews, I received 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep, on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety of for, for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is led to sin and am I not indig indigent? If I may boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The word of the Lord. From all that distress, God rescues the just. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. Oh, 
According to Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy and thieves break in and steal. But store up for your, up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. And if the light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? The Gospel of the Lord. So our gospel acclamation today, in the between the Alleluia, that little phrase there, is the first of the Beatitudes, which we have been reflecting on for the past week and a half, because we're still working our way through the Sermon on the Mount. We're getting a little pieces so we can chew on it. And that Alleluia verse, the first Beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then we have our Lord Jesus Christ giving us a little bit about being poor in spirit. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. We don't like that too much, do we? <laughs> we have a very consumeristic society where we want to store up treasures for ourselves and then overflowing. We like our 401ks, we like our big bank accounts, we like to fill our houses with lots of things. We can even shop online now. We don't even have to go out of the house to get stuff. We can just do it right there from our home and have it brought to us. We have this very consumeristic society where we love things. But our Lord tells us, don't put your treasure there. Don't put your heart there. Don't put your treasure in things where moth and uh, decay destroy and thieves break it and steal. We can get so caught up with the things of this earth that our eyes get turned towards the earth and we forget to look out towards others and towards God. He's attacking the greed in the heart, that greed that could lead to a lack of charity towards others that could turn us away from generosity because we're so concerned about having and protecting what we have that we don't live a life of generosity. Or we can be so consumed with this world that we forget that this is not all there is. There is more than this world. And no matter how many toys we have, or how much we have in the 401k, we're still going to die. <laughs> that is a reality. So far, as far as we know, 100% of persons have died of death. <laughs> it happens to each and every one of us. And so where do I put my treasure? Where do I put my heart? Where do I put my thirst, my desire? Where do I put my focus of my life? There was a, uh, in the time of St. Anthony of Padua, there was a man who was a usurer. This guy was uh, a lender and so forth and uh, was cheating people and, uh, and uh, he was cruel towards the people that borrowed from him. And St. Anthony of Padua tried his best to convert this man but could not. The man's heart was so hardened that no matter what St. Anthony of Padua did, he could not convert this man. And I forget the circumstances of why after the man died, they did an autopsy. I think maybe it was St. Anthony who told them to do the autopsy. And when they opened the man up, he had no heart. And so St. Anthony said, go check his treasure chest over there. And they opened his treasure chest, and the man's heart was in the treasure chest, which brought about the conversion of this guy's little minions, you know, because they realized, oh my goodness. You know, St. Anthony had worked this little miracle to show that this man's heart was in his treasure and was not in his chest. He did not have a heart for God. 
And no matter how hard St. Anthony tried, he couldn't get this man's heart to turn back towards God. It's very difficult at times in our culture and our world to keep that eye focused on the kingdom of heaven. That beautiful place where each of us will be our destined, where God wants us to be. And so we need to keep our eyes fixed on that goal, on that glory, on that kingdom, building up the treasure in heaven. And what are those treasures? Well, look at the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those are the treasures. And when we get too consumed with the things of this world, uh, we, we start decreasing in the treasure in heaven. When we start releasing our, uh, our eyes from this world and trying to have all the things of this world, our eyes are turned more to the store up in heaven. So what are the things of heaven? Charity. How greed can be so much uh, contrary to charity. Charity. Kindness. When we're too focused on greed, greed can take away kindness. Someone touches a person who's greedy, you touch their wallet, you feel their wrath. Certainly that happened to Jesus when he cleansed out the temple and ruined the business of the Pharisees who were cheating people. <laughs> he felt their wrath. Uh, gentleness. Generosity. Greed works against these fruits of the Spirit. And indeed, greed can take away joy. One may have a lot of things and be happy, but not have joy. We look at our society and our culture today, it is the richest culture, it is the richest, richest society in the history of humanity. Never before could even young people afford what they have. We never, you think back, right? Even 30 years ago, you could never afford what young people afford today in their 20s. It's amazing what they're able to have. It's a very lucrative, very wealthy society. And people are happy, but they don't have joy. They're happy for a moment, they're happy momentarily, then this is no longer good, they gotta get something better. It's always trying to accumulate, and you don't see true joy, we just see happiness. Isn't it amazing we live in the most wealthiest society in the history of humanity, and yet we have the highest depression in the history of humanity? The highest suicide rate in the history of humanity? At a time when we have everything, everything but God. And that's the key element, right? When you bring in God into society, our Lord encourages us to be generous, to be charitable, to look out for the other and so forth. And it kind of goes against society. One can find joy, but it comes at a cost. Anyway, I guess today I just want us to reflect upon where, our, where is our heart? Where is our desires? What am I thirsting for? What am I working for? Am I simply working to have enough of the things of this world, more than enough? Or am I truly working towards the end goal, the true end goal of life? The true end goal of life is when I stand before Jesus Christ and I hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter the kingdom of my Father, prepared for you for the foundation of the world. That's what we need to be working for, for that day, that test, <laughs> that moment. You know, that when we stand before Christ Jesus, because this world is passing, and it is passing. So today, a little bit shorter my homily this morning, for your benefit. <laughs> my mind's a little tired this morning, I need an extra cup of coffee. But I just encourage us to really contemplate where are our eyes fixed? Are they fixed on the kingdom of heaven? Are they fixed on Christ? When my eyes are fixed on Christ, are they turning and, and entering the light coming into my heart that's exposing the greed perhaps, or exposing um, what's there that doesn't belong there? Is, is the light of God entering through my eyes to my heart, uh, burning off the corrosion of my heart, allowing my heart to be purified to such a degree that my heart is then set on the kingdom of heaven? Is my heart set on Christ? Does it desire Christ? Does it long for Christ? Does it truly love Christ? Does it want to be with Christ? Is my heart truly thirsting for Christ? And do my eyes allow that light of God to shine in my heart, to deliver Christ to my heart? My eyes fixed on him. I'll just close with a little phrase, something Our Lady said to St. Bridget when she was appearing to St. Bridget. 
revealing to St. Bridget her sufferings of her Immaculate Heart. She said to St. Bridget that when they rolled the stone in front of the tomb, when they buried Christ and they rolled the stone in front of the tomb, Our Lady told St. Bridget, when they rolled the stone in front of the tomb, there were two hearts in that tomb, Jesus' heart and my heart. Because our Lord said, where your treasure is, there is your heart, and my son is my treasure. So is Christ my treasure? Is my heart with him? Is my heart in him? Is he in my heart? May the Lord grant us that grace to truly keep our eyes fixed on the glory, fixed on the kingdom, fixed on Christ, that our thirst may always be for him, and may our thirst be satisfied. May God bless you, and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of his wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the Lord, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the Lord, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the Lord, have mercy on us. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of
I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. I was going to mention at the homily that when I was a young boy, someone told me, I don't know when I was told and how I was told, that Jesus was truly present in the Eucharist at Mass after the words of consecration. And I would always did this as a little child. I would stare at the Eucharist after consecration when the priest would hold it up. And I'd try my best to see Jesus in the Eucharist. It was this focus that I just wanted to see him in the Eucharist. And uh, it was like a straining of my eyes every time at Mass, you know. And uh, eventually as time went on, I discovered it was not with the physical eyes I was going to see him, but with the eyes of my heart and the eyes of faith. And truly, as the eyes of faith, to come to truly see our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And in seeing him spiritually in the heart, in faith, knowing his true presence in the Eucharist, discovering that he is the true treasure that we work for, right? The true treasure is the Holy Eucharist, which is why we use beautiful vessels of gold, is because it contains the beautiful, true body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that beautiful faith that we work interiorly, daily, to be more and more purified. We work hard to build up and to receive the treasure of the Most Holy Eucharist, this beautiful, beautiful gift of the Father. And the gift is His Son, so that we could become ever more faithful children of the Father. How beautiful, it all kind of pulls together. In any event, have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day, and may you see Christ everywhere. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.